How is everyone today? Weather is supposed to get better next week. Great for that, right? Um, <clears throat> today after the service, if you want to stay just a few more minutes, um, Lori and Dan are going to talk to you about the trips that she had mentioned on Facebook. Um, if you want to know more information about that, stay just a few minutes in here and they'll talk about it. Is there any other announcements? Quiet bunch. Next week is Palm Sunday. And then uh, that th coming Thursday after that, the 14th, I do believe it is, um, we're going to have a uh, soup and sandwiches here for Body Thursday. So uh, don't forget that either. Any joys or concerns this morning? Um, Ariel and her dad's family are leaving tonight to go to Florida. So I just pray that they have a safe and sane trip with all the kids. Um, next Saturday morning, me and the girls are leaving to travel to Arkansas to see my sister. Um, so we're just hoping that we make it there safe. I have a joy. Um, we had our closing ceremony for Club Can Do. On Friday and we had a lot of families come out and made some connections so hopefully we'll see some of them kids um, I also have a concern my brother-in-law that had a stroke two years ago and hasn't really recovered they just found a tumor on his lung, and he needs a lot of prayers first name Mike Mike Although I know this is going to hor horrify my child, Benjamin needs pr prayer. <laughs> um, he broke his hand, thumb in baseball, and he's had it in a cast for two weeks, and now he has managed to move the bone completely away from where it's supposed to be and is going to need hand surgery probably. So he could use some prayers for a quick recovery so he might get to play one or two games this season. One-handed push-ups. Well, we have a joy. Our daughter made it with all your prayers to Spain. So pray on Wednesday that she comes back safely, too. Um, also, you're going to notice someone's missing this morning who never misses church, and that is Miss Cheryl. She is sick lady. She's been sick since Friday, so you, she needs our prayers also. Dave, over here. I'm busy goofing off. I have a prayer request and a praise. Um, I uh, pray that the Lord will teach me to take care of myself with all the other things I have to do. And I have a praise that starting Friday night, um, I have been experiencing recovery and I'd like to share that um, I was given on the radio this morning a little thing to help us to remember. Um, when we've got so many things to do and so many things we want to do, especially to serve God, we are a child of God. We are not a hamster, so get off the wheel. We also have a joy that Trina has finished her training for Safe Sanctuary, so she can actually train people for Safe Sanctuary. So, she was inducted into the National Honor Society. I saw summer, that. So, yeah. Good job, Lexi. Yes. Ooh. Speech, speech, speech. 
I've had this autoimmune disease for probably close to three years. And for about two and a half years, I've had infusions every five weeks. I was at the neurologist this week, and he doesn't think I need them anymore. Praise God. Thank God for that. Praise God. Just a couple of praises, answers for prayer. Um, my 96-year-old mother here dared go down to Florida by herself on the airplane and, and came back. All the connections were made. The, the airline took great care of her, wheelchaired her into the plane, got her to her seat, knew that she was mostly deaf and practically blind. Um, and it was just amazing. My brother and his wife picked him up, took him to my other brothers, and we all came back the same way, and she survived. Only to get the stomach bug two days later, but instead of five days, she had it for the one day, which is good. But we've had a sick house at my house for a couple of months, and we're finally on the mend, all of us at the same time. So We're glad you're back, too. Yeah. Elaine, we're glad you're back, too. I understand you had some health issues. Oh, I had quite a heck of a time. What yeah. a big surprise. Yeah. My doctor even said it was an adventure. You had an adventure this week. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have called it that, but okay. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father... We have joys and we have concerns. It's always nice to hear the joys. Lord, we ask to be with those who are in need of your prayer today. Be with them, Lord. Watch over them. Give them the healing touch that they need. We thank you for everything that you've given each one of us as we take this journey toward Easter with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand if you're able or in spirit and join us in the opening hymn, Spirit of Living God, 393. confess our faith in Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus as Lord. Let us call upon God's name. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have mine. We are no longer our own. We belong to God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we are yours and you are our God, so be it. The covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Amen. Join me in the unison prayer. All who have sinned fall short of the glory of God, trusting that we are justified freely by God's grace. Let us confess our sins together. Forgive us our stubbornness and our unrepented hearts. Forgive us when we are self-seeking and fail to follow the truth and instead follow evil. We long to do what is good in your sight. Help us to obey your commands, not just listen to them self-righteously. 
Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. Amen. Greet one another with the love of Christ. It doesn't matter. You could, it's, it's fine. You... Um, I wasn't sure if everyone was aware, but I thought it would be important for everyone to know that the month of April is Prevent Child Abuse Month. Um, so if you guys end your ways to the Dollar Tree or something, keep in mind that pinwheels are a sign of prevent child abuse. So just wanted everyone to know that. Join us in the next hymn for a thousand for a thousand tongues, fifty seven.
Heavenly Father, we are blessed. And we thank you for the blessings that you've given us. We thank you for the support of the people here. Keep our church going. And we ask that you watch over us as we take this journey with you and keeping our church full of spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. First reading today is James 5, 16 through 18. And I can't read. <laughs> Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed the heavens gave and and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crops this is the word of the lord and our second reading is romans 10 10 through 13 For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all, and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Amanda. Confession is a process of recognize, recognition of sin, turning from it and experiencing the forgiveness of God. Having a regular practice of searching our lives and coming into the light can cultivate a life full of grace and mercy as we rise from the ashes of the past sins and poor decisions making in our lives. Let us pray. Repeat after me. God, I confess today that I have made decisions that have broken my relationship with you. Forgive me for my mistakes I have made. Free me from shame and guilt that I may walk in the newness of life that you offer me in your Son. May my life be transparent before you in my, and may you help me to live my life with wisdom. Amen. Well, I have a confession. I remember when I was a kid, about 12, 13, we were visiting our uncle and aunt in New Brunswick, Canada. My brother was th three years older than I am, and my cousin. We were outside, and we had a baseball bat, and we were hitting rocks. Have you ever done that? Throw a rock up, hit it. Baseball bat, rocks. We did that for quite a while. 
my turn. I get up, I had a rock about, yay, so. I said, that's going to go. I hauled off and I hit that rock right through my uncle's brand new truck's windshield. And it wasn't just a little crack, it just shattered it across the front. He'd only had the truck about a month or a month and a half, I don't know exactly. Brand new. I did not want to go tell my uncle I did this. I was terrified. I had so much fear, I was shaking. I didn't know his reaction. Brand new truck. My uncle, God bless his soul. All he said when I went and told him is that's what I have insurance for. <laughs> I tell you, that was a relief. Honest relief. That's what I have insurance for. My uncle has gone to be the Lord many years ago. But my uncle was an amazing Christian man. Admitting failure is difficult. Confessing and cl coming clean when you are at fault is not an easy task. Take it from me. I did not want to take it up there and tell my uncle that I broke his windshield. I wanted to blame it on my brother. He was three years older. But I did it. I had to confess. And my uncle, all he said was, that's what I have insurance for. And I think it was the next week he put in a windshield in that. No problem. I'm sure many of you here today have a similar stories like the one I just shared. Honestly, we probably all have numerous stories that sound similar. Thankfully, these stories end differently. They end differently when God gets involved. My uncle was a Christian man. He was a Pentecostal. But he was truly a Christian man. When God gets involved, these stories end differently. With God, we are promised forgiveness. When we confess our sin and come clean, and when we bring ourselves into the, into the light, we can live free. Unburdened or unhindered by the sin that so easily entangles us so that we can run the race set before us. Hebrews 12, 1. Confession is our fourth topic of our sixth week together on a journey to abundant life. Obviously, Jesus led a sinless life. So we won't see any specific examples from his life, including sin. However, it is because of Jesus' sinless life in the humble sacrifice that we can experience this unrestrained forgiveness of the Father over our sin. As I said in the week one, you are not broken beyond repair. <clears throat> Jesus 
Jesus is the reason we can confess and experience complete forgiveness. Complete forgiveness in our lives. This divine forgiveness is truly amazing grace. And it is such a different response to the wrongdoings than what many of us grew up experiencing. I didn't grow up in the church. My uncle did. But I didn't. Our teaching today is going to follow a story of a, an arrogant son. In his journey from the ash heap back to the arms of his father. We squandered it all. It's not going to be a typical story of the prodigal son. It's going to be a little different today. This story is where we most of our stories begin. We are convinced we, we know how to run our life better than God. So we take all that he has given us and we waste it. Waste it on living however we want. We double down on this bad decisions and hurt others, ourselves and others in the process. This is also a story of a younger son, the prodigal son. Jesus said there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of, my, of the estate. So, the, they, so he divided his property between, between them. Now long after that, he, not long after that, he, his younger son got everything together. Everything that he had and set off to a distant country. And there he squandered his wealth in wild living. Now the word used here for wild living is only used once in the New Testament. It describes, it describes in a wasteful lifestyle. It may seem like the right thing for a time and after all, in case of the younger son, he was only spending his rightful inheritance. But eventually the money runs out and the parties come to an end and the nerves wear thin. It's at this point we realize we've wasted it all. In the words of a prophet Isaiah, we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. This story reminds me of my younger brother. I have four younger brothers. He seemed to be in trouble all the time. He was working here and there. And he finally got to the point where he didn't want to live like that. He got married. Got a job at Corning Glassworks. Doing well. Bought him a home. Daughter in college. He's been there about 10 years now. Doing well. But he got to that point where he just didn't want to live that way anymore, the way he was living. 
And he changed his way of living. And he's doing well. Doing well. No longer worthy. Continuing in Luke 15, we read, After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to, to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of the country who sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with pods that the pigs were eating. But no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and he went to his father. There needs to to be a time in each of our lives where we simply come to our senses and realize that our life will never be what it was meant to be apart from the Father. My prayer is that none of you here have to lose anything, become shattered or have your dreams reduced to ashes. But the good news is we are able to make the decisions to head home at any time. Some of us simply must come to the end of our, our worth and realize that in Christ alone we, we are found worthy before the Father. Not based upon anything we can, can or cannot do, but based upon the finished work of Christ on the cross. As the younger son reaches his end, look at the confession he was practicing Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. He recognizes the immorality of his life. And he understood, understands his sin not only touches his, his earthly father, but his heavenly father as well. Alive again. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. Filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son. Threw his arms around him and he kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But you know what? We have that same thing if we want to be. All we got to do is run to the Father. And He will open His arms wide to us. And He will accept us in. No matter where kind of condition we're in, where we're at, He will accept us in. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put on his finger the ring, sandals on his feet. 
Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. That's what Jesus is going to do for us. Put the best robe on them. Let's have a celebration. For this son of mine was dead. And it is alive again. He was lost and he is found. So they bring in to celebrate. I believe that that's what Jesus will do to us. For us. We have been lost and we are found. He is going to celebrate. For all of us. All that are found. We can come to the Lord with open arms. This is one of the most beautiful scenes of compassion in the entire Bible. The younger son reaches bottom and begins heading home. But even while he's still a long way from home, his father sees him and runs out to meet him. You can almost hear the son's muffled apology coming through the sound of his father's warm embrace and smothering kisses. The young man's humility and confession and willingness to return home and having lost everything says a lot about his true character. Yes, he was physically starving and yes, he was in a foreign land with nothing to show. But there, at rock bottom, what really mattered became clear to him. The abundance of food, mercy and compassion and warmth and etc., of his father's house called him home. How many of you need to humble yourselves to this, this morning, confess your sin against God and others and return to the father? Let me ask you, What's keeping you from the Father today? Anger? Unforgiveness? Offense? Unmet expectations? Past hurts? What can be confessed, repented of, and healed today? James 5.16 says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of righteousness, righteous person is powerful and effective. Come home to the Father. Today. Today. 